Today I'm going to be teaching you how to do an Ant-Man shrinking effect using the Roto Brush tool and doing a tsunami-like effect using Big Film's Apocalypse Pack all inside of After Effects. And here's a tiny little film I made to show what we're about to do. <sighs> My drain's clogged. No need to fear, Ant-Man is here. Jim, I know that's you. I know you're not Ant-Man. Alright, where's that drain? Oh, I had to turn it the other way. <sighs> So let's hop on over to After Effects and see how we can do it ourselves. So I'm in After Effects now and I have the clip of him pressing the button and kind of jumping out of frame. Then I also below this have a clean plate of him not there. He presses the button right about there. So we're going to throw our clean plate and we're going to cut him off so it just goes like pew. So he just kind of disappears. Now what we're gonna do is use the roto brush tool. So we're going to hit Control D or Command D, depending on what you're using. We're gonna duplicate the footage on top and we're going to set our in and out points. I use Alt open bracket and then we're gonna go to the end and hit Alt close bracket to quickly create a nice uh, section where he's going to be shrinking. So we're just wanting this tiny little section of him falling, and we're gonna use the roto brush tool, that will be a common theme for today, uh, to make that happen. So we're going to take this and we're going to roto brush him. So if we're gonna hit control click, and we can make that a little bit bigger, then we're just gonna brush in just him. Try not to get the background, and if you get the background, just hit alt and paint and click and you will remove that as well. So we're gonna press, press play forward and see if it does it. Does it perfectly fine, and it was fast too. Let's hit freeze right here. And basically what that's doing is just making sure that that doesn't waver. We have him kind of shrinking down like that and he disappears. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the pan baton tool, or if you hit Y on your keyboard, you can get it up. And we're gonna take this point, which is your anchor point, which basically means that everything will happen on that axis. So if we rotate it, it's rotating at that point. Or if we scale it, more importantly, it's scaling on that axis. And that's why we wanna move the anchor point below here. So when we scale it down, it uh, looks like he's shrinking down and we don't have to animate the position. So we're gonna, Click S for the scale, then we're going to hit the stopwatch tool, and we're going to go to the end of this, and I'm going to go and scale this down to about like 20%, and I'm going to move this uh, keyframe to the end. Let's turn on our motion blur first, and if I had the keyframe right there, there would be no blur there, so if I moved it to the end, there's some blur there before it cuts out, so right there, it would work as an Ant-Man effect, but I think we can do more Ant-Man-y things. So if we just take this layer and we sort of scoot it along, like it kind of freeze frames, and if we do it for like two frames, we get like a echo effect, or we should be getting an echo effect. Now, if we put it below our layer, you can actually see more of what I'm doing. I'm making sort of an echo effect, which is common for the Ant-Man shrinking effect, where it sort of goes down like that. Now, if you've seen the Ant-Man effect, it it's uh, kind of a bright, like he leaves like this bright echo. And you can just switch your duplicate layers and, and we can set this to maybe screen and it's already got that brightness. And already we have a pretty cool effect. Now, if we wanna spice that up even more, we can add find edges. And what find edges does is it finds the edges uh, of your clip. It's finding those edges. And we can just add a tint effect uh, to that. And we kind of have that. Now, I would like to invert this. It's only finding the edges. So essentially, we are making just like a black and white outline. Then we can also blend with original a little bit. So there's kind of a halo. I think we'll just duplicate this onto the next layer below it. And then we have this cool echo effect and it makes for a pretty convincing Ant-Man effect. 
we didn't have a big enough green screen. Ideally, that this would have been shot on a big green screen, but we didn't do that. So we just did this in my driveway and we just had him run. So what we're gonna do is rotoscope him out and put him on top of this bathtub plate here. So we're gonna use that same technique. Where we're gonna click the roto brush tool, double click on our layer, and I'm gonna hit control and click to drag to make that a little bit smaller and drag around where he is and unclick the stuff that it accidentally slags on and then playing forward and freeze framing it just like we did the first shot. So let's just see how it does. Roto brush is way too good. <laughs> so, and then you just hit freeze frame. Okay, now we have the little clip of him running. Uh, so let's place this as best as we can. So I'm going to scale him down just like that, and then I'm gonna move the bathtub frame up a little bit. So now we have the bathtub and him running away <laughs> out of the bathtub. That, that's a good run. Almost a Tom Cruise-like run. Now let's add our tsunami effect from big films. I'm gonna add tsunami static one. And why the static one? Because we're gonna animate it ourselves. So we're gonna place that below our Ant-Man. And this is in 4K, so it's pretty big. So we can do a lot of scaling to this and it won't really affect it. So we're gonna scale it down and we're going to kind of line it up with the floor here as best as we can. You can't really tell what the floor looks like. Right there looks good. And let's move that anchor point to like the middle of the tsunami. So when we scale it up, it will scale from the middle of that. Okay, then let's sort of hit S on our keyboard on the tsunami, hit the stopwatch to be able to animate it. And then as he runs, we're going to scale this up just like so. And we might animate the position by hitting P and hitting that stopwatch and then bringing the position down slightly because I think it would be moving down a hair uh, up the floor. So now we have him running away from a tidal wave. Now, obviously we need to make this work a little bit better. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the edges here and we're going to add uh, a rectangle tool. And if you go up here, click on the rectangle tool, double click, you'll create a mask around your frame perfectly. So then what we can do is take this and sort of scale it in just a hair and f hit F for feather and feather out the edges just a hair. So then it kind of looks like it's more feathered onto the edges of the bowl. And it looks already way more, you know, clean. But one thing that would really help is one, coloring this. So if we add the tint effect, and I'm just going to tint it like that, and maybe even taking that map to white and keying one of the, the colors here might be too dark, but it's kind of like a yellowish color. We might be able to add a lumetry effect and up the exposure just so it just matches the walls a little bit. So right there, uh, we're getting a good match. You know what, and why we're at it, let's uh, color uh, Ant-Man. So if we add a lumetry effect, just do basic corrections to it. Let's, uh, he's too blue, so we'll make him a little warmer. We'll make him less pink. Uh, and we'll up the exposure. All right, so now let's kind of go and add a bunch of water blast, also from big films, to the side here. So what I did was added like water blast three or something to the edges. What I'm doing here is using it to add some side interaction. Instead of just using one element, what I'm gonna be doing is taking this element and let's first try to color it to match. Let's also add a tint effect. Let's make it a little darker, kind of, you know, make it that color. There we go, Look, matches pretty well. And what, I'm, what I did was I just duplicated the layer a bunch and re-timed it to be later. And so I sort of just like went pop, pop, pop. And I just went down the line, duplicated it, moved it down a few frames repositioned it to like when it would hit doing that a bunch so a couple frames move it down move it like that duplicate it again move it down a few frames and sort of just follow the line of the water and so it sort of looks like the sides are getting blasted with water and do that to each side so let's 
keep doing this and I will come back when I'm done. All right, I am done now and I added the blast uh, to the side of it. And now what I'm gonna do is take the water blasts and the tsunami, pre-compose them together, call it tsunami. But what I'm gonna do is now that we have that, duplicate our effect, we want to flip it vertically. So if we right click, go to transform and flip vertically, we can go and flip that like that. And we've created a reflection of the tsunami. So we have to position it as it goes though. So as it's at the beginning, we'll position it where it should be. And then as it's at the end, we'll also position it just using the stopwatch tool and such like that. So now we've created a reflection. Uh, now it's not a good reflection because we'll have to lower its opacity. So if you hit T on your keyboard, lower the opacity and also adding a fast box blur um, to your clip, but just a little bit and lowering the opacity can just add that extra layer of like, oh, it's right there. You know what? And while we're at it, let's add a reflection to him. So if we duplicate our Ant-Man shot and let's take the bottom duplicate, move the pan behind right there and let's transform flip vertically as well. And now we've flipped it perfectly where his feet are because we move the anchor point. So now let's do the same thing, position it. Uh, and as he moves, we're gonna have to move the reflection because that is not how reflections work. They don't stay in one spot, they follow the person. Uh, let's just take this, um, add a fast box blur to it, blur it out, and then lower its opacity. And then we have a good reflection of him as well. All right. so. One thing about this uh, effect shot is that it doesn't look small. And the key to making something look small is using a tilt shift effect. Now, uh, a way to make a tilt shift effect is uh, by making a black and white map uh, specifying what things are in focus and what things aren't. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our layer, we're gonna duplicate all of the layers, and then we're gonna move them to the top and then pre-compose them and call this tilt shift effect thing. And you have to call it that because it's important. <laughs> and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna create the tilt shift effect. First thing we can do, we can delete all of our reflections we did. All we're concerned about is creating a map that says this thing's in focus and that's not using black and white values. So essentially, if something is black, that means it's in focus. And if something's white, that means it's out of focus. So what we're gonna be doing is creating a fake tilt shift map or a depth map. So if we go in and we add fill to our Ant-Man layer, we can make that pure black. And we're basically saying that's in focus. Then our tsunami, what we're going to do is going to animate its properties so it starts white or like a little bit gray and then it slowly becomes black to become in focus so we're going to animate that here in a minute and then the background itself we're going to create a custom little mask that follows the edges of this so we're going to create a black layer and if you hit Control y you can create solids and then we're going to hit Control y again and create a white layer. And again, white things are out of focus and black things are in focus. So if we kind of turn off our white layer and black layer, we can kind of like go, okay, this part is the area that I want to be in focus and the part after that is not. So if I create a little mask and go, okay, that's out of focus. And now we have the black layer saying that that is in focus and we can feather that out just like that, add our tsunami and add our Ant-Man, and we can kind of create this effect. So now what we're gonna do is create the effect that the um, tsunami is coming closer. So if we make the tsunami pure white, like right here, cause it's in this sort of area of the bathtub, we're going to animate its color. And then as he gets right there, we're going to make it uh, a little bit more black like that. So it's sort of coming into focus. So now we've created this depth mat, right? So now we can take this, throw it at the bottom and create 
a um, adjustment layer by hitting Control Alt Y or Command Alt Y and adding the camera lens blur effect. And the little technique we're using is called a blur map where we can use a layer and it's going to be using the black and white values of that layer to determine what's in focus. And right there, when I switched it to the tilt shift effect, it's already going, this is in focus, that's out of focus. And that's all it is. So we're gonna focus it, defocus it, but just a little subtle blur like that will make it feel a lot smaller. Now it's just those final touches. We can go in and add Chromatic Aberration. Now this is a plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration 2. It is a free plugin by Plugin Everything, I believe. Now, specifically when you're shooting macro photography, which is when you get really close to something, it will look like separated like this. So if we crank that up to two, we've, we, we've created this effect that looks much smaller. What I wanted to do is also make the edges kind of blurry. Add another adjustment layer, the radial fast blur effect, and kind of blur the edges like that. And if we add the ellipse tool again and set that to subtract, and feather it, we're kind of creating this like blurred edge effect that's really nice. And then we can also add the quick chromatic aberration effect to that. And if you hit unmult, that will make that effect not happen. And crank it just so the edges have that like chromatic aberration kind of separation. That's when you get that really small looking effect and it looks really sweet. I hope you can make your small films feel big using big films. <laughs> that was a good, that was a good closer. So please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Just let us know if you love these videos down below. Hope y'all learned something and have a good day.